the Take A View podcast with Charlie Waite. Hello, everybody. I'm very pleased to welcome you all to our discussion with Matthew Cattell on this occasion. And for those of you who don't remember, you will when I tell you what his image amounted to. In 2016, I think it was, Matthew Cattell was the overall winner with a most magnificent, racy, thrilling photograph of a zillion starlings flying over Brighton Pier. And Matthew was a worthy winner of an absolutely wonderful, wonderful image. And um, where he was so clever was that he got his exposure so perfectly right. And there we had this feeling of, of literally millions of birds flying in front of him. And it was a, an extraordinarily, extremely exciting, that's a good word, and thrilling photograph. So uh, Matthew and I are going to have a chat. And uh, Matthew, here we are in uh, whatever date it is, having a natter. And welcome to our to our series. No, thank you, thank you for inviting me. Um, it's, it's been a little while since we've we've spoken, and of course, thank you for that sort of thrilling, uh, you know, in, in introduction. Um, Do you remember what that what it was like to to have learned that you had won? I uh, tell you what, I had to drive home from the centre of Oxford afterwards, and um, I have never been so um, I don't know distracted. <laughs> It's probably not the right thing to say, to be honest. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. <laughs> and you came to the opening night, at, what was that at Waterloo then, I think, wasn't it? Yes, it was. And yeah. it was Julia, Julia Bradbury um, mm. sort of boosting uh, the whole experience. So certainly that sort of first few months with the interviews and, and the exhibition and, and the book being released and everything that was in, in the press, you can't really describe it. In, you know, it's one of those things you have to sort of experience. It, 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 it's sort of a, you know, akin to, to winning the lottery. Uh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely fantastic. So would you encourage... Uh people to enter the competition i suspect you'd probably say I, yes I, I i would entering is you know there's there's the excitement and obviously there's the element of fun and and, and sort of uh sort of anticipation um and, and obviously you know if if you are lucky and uh you know you do you do go on and and, and do well or, or or win you know there there are so many uh, it opens you know a whole range of of, of opportunities uh, you know, to, to you. And certainly for me personally, it gave me a huge amount of confidence to carry on taking photographs. Um, I, you know, I, I don't know whether I would be, would still be doing so if it, if it hadn't happened. I'd like to think that I would. Um, and I'd like to think it, it, say it gave, gave me a confidence to experiment um, and, and, and be more, more creative and push my photography. And I'd like to think I'm a better photographer as a result of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's that's a wonderful thing to hear. One of the words that really came out of what you've just said is the word confidence. Mm. Um, do you agree that um, that one of the, the problems with any creative endeavour, I don't think it's a problem, actually, it's, it's almost a good thing. I often say that um, insecurity should always accompany any creative endeavour because we don't we don't really want to wander around banging, beating our breasts saying that we're wonderful photographers. I mean, it's, it's so, you know, that it's so much experimental. It's so we're slightly nervous. We're hoping that we're going to achieve an image that will convey how we responded. But but you you use that word. And do you now you genuinely do feel really much more confident than you did before as a as a, as a creative uh, photographer? Definitely. Don't get me wrong. We again, creativity has its peaks and troughs. Mm. You know, there are always times um, when you feel that you're in a bit of a rut, or or that you're perhaps not as brilliant as you you kind of like to to be. You might have seen something um, recently. And you go, oh, wow, that that really is sort of raising raising the bar. But even I mean, even if it comes down to almost sort of hesitating over pressing the shutter button, it has given me that sort of confidence. And sort of self belief that if I've sort of lined, spent ages sort of lining something up, that that you know, actually pressing the shutter is a is a worthwhile thing, and deciding when to do it, and 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 almost sort of committing to creating that that photograph. I think that does take you know a, a lot of a lot of confidence. Mm. One of the things I'd like to ask you is that when you um, produce that image, did you did you think to yourself, ah? Oh, I think I might sort of consider maybe having an exhibition or I'm, or I might, I don't know, make some, some posters and, and perhaps sell, sell that photograph. And, and I wondered, it occurred to me that down at Brighton, 
there, no one would ever have seen an image quite so amazing. And I keep using the word thrilling because it really was. Um, and I'm wondering if there might be something that we could sort of discuss because I'm very keen to do to print. And uh, had you ever thought of that? I imagine it was pretty exciting when you saw the first print made of it. Yeah, no, it, uh, so at the time, um, printing was, was something I did a little bit of, but um, it was not something that I was particularly sort of heavily involved, involved in. I'd, I'd recently joined a, a, a camera club and obviously I took part in, in, in sort of those uh, sort of, uh, you know, sort of quarterly print competitions. So it's something that I'd started to do, but I, I'd never really kind of thought about running my own exhibition or, or really printing in any sort of real purpose. Certainly after, after it sort of succeeded, there was a, a sort of huge wave of interest in it. Um, I had a chat with Finn down in, in, in one of the galleries on the seafront just below the I-360. And he's been he's been sort of selling it on my behalf down down there as well. That has been uh, you know an amazing. I had countless uh, prints from it. Oh, good! How exciting! Yeah. So it's kind of it, it kind of grew my interest in sort of printing. Kind of grew from from that really. When you think about your photograph, and um, we've applied that you know sometimes you see, um, especially in photographic societies and clubs, people have. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I suppose they they call them rules, and and I think most people would agree that rules are there just as guidance. You don't have to adhere to them. So, you know, I put a lot of things in the middle of my photographs, which yeah. is is taboo. So I don't think people are suggesting you absolutely they have to be rigidly attended to. But it is quite interesting when you think about viewing photographs from left to right. I met somebody the other day who said that, who, who suggested that in the um, in the West we read from left to right, and often we put the anchor to our photograph on the left. Um, and in the Orient, our, uh, the photography by some of the very distinguished people photographing in China and, and various other parts of the of the East, um, they read from right to left, so they put their anchor on the right. And at looking at your marvelous image from. 2016 um the the brighton pier is exactly you know is perfect but um you couldn't honestly say that the birds are flying from left to right i mean it's just that and not one of them bump into each other do they that's the most incredible skill so but did, when you where where you when you learned your photography did you did you decide to go and do a course or did you just you're just a natural who just looked at other people's photographs and you probably acquired ideas and various methods of uh, composition and so on uh, just by osmosis really and I, by it. I did a black and white film course whilst I was at college um, sort of secondary to, to my uh, GCSEs um, but that was very much focused on um, developing film and then taking that black and white film in, in, into a, a dark room and enlarging uh, and producing prints that way it was not about the art of taking you know a, a photograph in the first place so definitely by osmosis uh, you know I've been taking pictures for for a, a, a very long time um, and I've, I've got a, a large library of, of photography books over just just over to the to the side which I sort of rely on you know to to sort of learn and inspire um, uh, sort of my, my creative approach to photography um, but it's never been sort of taught it's all it's it's sort of learned through um, learned through doing and I, I, I made a little note um, about uh, about a lot of sort of composition almost almost feeling instinctive um, once you've sort of learned those those rules um, when I suddenly go on to a location it is almost that sort of instinctive compositional creative creative process um, as opposed to Right, I must put this here, and this must line through here. It's 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 far more um, I don't know nuanced. I agree with you. I mean, your your stunning photograph of Brighton Pier. Did, was that um, uh, essentially planned? Did you think to yourself the shapes are good, the position of the pier is good? Um, I just need something to animate it, or or was it one of those lovely surprises where you think, oh my word, this is just incredible, and you happen to have your camera? The, the, our listeners, I, if I can call you all our listeners, which you all are, um, uh, presumably would I'm sure would be very interested to know how you came across such a, a completely unusual. Photograph. I mean, I've never seen anything like this, and I should think not many people ever will again. 
I have been back on several occasions now. Um, I, I, I almost re sort of delved into that sort of bright and murmuration as a, as a project last winter. And I never saw conditions and, and, and affecting in quite the, the same, the same sort of way. It, it's one of those things as uh, I, I do a little bit of wildlife and a little bit of landscape. And I like, I like that sort of crossover between those sort of two general genres of, of photography. So it's something, you know, and I, and I have a deep sort of interest and, and passion for, for the natural world. So the spectacle in its own right is something that I was certainly aware of. It was the first time I'd ever been and, and, and seen it and sort of standing on, on the pier, watching the birds as they sort of, and they start quite far away and then they, they get progressively closer. And as they get closer, um, their numbers start to swell in and, and increase. Um, so I, I kind of had a, a feel or, or an idea of what I wanted to sort of achieve and the sort of the, the, the framing and everything was kind of set up uh, with the with the pier in, in that sort of loose position. I, I moved it around a little bit as I kind of experimented. And then it was a case of sort of, in, sort of standing back, enjoying the scene and, and sort of pressing the shutter button, really, and sort of trying to time that exposure with different sort of movements within 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 the birds within what they what they were doing and I was changing the ISO I think it was taken at 400 so I, sh I tried some that were slower some that were faster shutter speeds to see what different effects you, you would kind of get but the whole thing only lasts for 45 minutes maybe um so oh, that all uh, well, well, I suppose that from from the, the the first starling appearing to when they sort of disappear in under the under the pier, it it, it lasts for about forty five minutes. Wow. Well, obviously, it's it's a it's a big expanse of of sea, and sometimes they're far away. They they go from being far away to being right in front of you, um, almost almost instantly. So, oh my um, there was certainly an opportunity to 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 experiment, but there was no time to sort of review or sort of reflect on, on what I was doing. So it wasn't until I got home uh, and sort of had a look on, on my computer, I realized what I'd actually captured. And did you, did you then um, have a look at it and think, I, is this appropriate for landscape photography of the year? There must have been a bit of you that thought that because, of course, there's, there's such a wide competition. You know, people can enter, you know, virtually virtually anything it just has to be outside. And, um, and I mean, it, you, there must have been a moment where you thought, this is, is this a wildlife? Thank goodness you didn't. You weren't, um, you, you didn't, you know, you were encouraged to, in your own self-belief and confidence to go ahead and enter this one. You could easily have just said no. I don't think it's it's right. Um, thank you for doing so. <laughs> I think. Well, I'm to, to be honest, I think you would struggle to argue against the, the the certainly during the winter months that the starlings are are not integral to Brighton seafront. Um, if you go there in, in in the evening, you cannot miss them. I mean, it, it's it's such a, yeah. a large and, and an incredible spectacle to to see. It's as important as the piers and the buildings and the sea and the sand, you know. So for me, yes, it's got a wildlife element. Yes, it's got a landscape element. And, and as I say, my sort of interest sits in that in that sort of um, that gray area that, that that's that's between the two. Um, but I, you know, if anyone ever sort of approached me with with a with a wildlife influenced photograph and said, "Do you think this would work?" I mean. I would I would actively encourage them because it's it's a little bit interesting. It's a little it's a little has a potential to be to be a little bit a little bit different as as well. Mm. I think one of the things that's so special about it, and and it looked like you were as you, your planning really paid off, was the um, the the va the tonal value of the sea, mm. you know, where you had that broken up into white, into beige, white, beige. You had that banding. And it was that was so so successful. I think so. It, it made the image look so incredibly lively. But looking at this one, when you when you look at your other your other styles of photography, um, are they quite? I mean, they're obviously quite widespread. I I I I have a go at just about everything. I was photographing a centipede the other day, and I just thought I want to get closer to it. And and we often use I often use that expression that. You know the camera is a most wonderful tool um, to not just show other people and, and 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 so on and let them see and share your image making process, but also it allows you to immerse yourself into the whole process of photography and getting closer to this extraordinary event. I mean, a lot of people 
there was a time I didn't know what the word murmuration meant um, a few years ago. Um, but it is a um, fantastic phenomena. But are you are you finding that a bit like me and like many of us, you you can respond to pretty much anything? I mean, do you do a lot of black and white, for example? I don't do so much black and white, but that's where I started really developing black and black and white film. Um, certainly, my sort of uh, my introduction into um, sort of SLR and image image sort of creation. Um, and for a little while, that was that was the case. When I started using digital cameras, it was uh, I, I, everything that I did was was in black and white. Um, I found it easier to sort of see shapes and sort of geometry and and, and, and lines if I kind of removed the removed the color. These days, I try and celebrate color uh, a, a little more. Having said that, a lot of what I've been doing certainly over certainly recently is has been in sort of in conditions that you know sort of fog or, or, or mist um where the the sort of color palette is almost monotone um or should i say all of the colors are so sort of desaturated <laughs> that it almost is 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 black and white yes um and i'd certainly say i prefer a, a, a more subtle um a subtle approach to to photography than um that on, on the whole than, than something that is a bit more loud and sort of energetic Mm. Then thinking a little bit about sort of composition, I think a lot of the decisions that I make from a compositional perspective, they sort of reflect that sort of that sort of tonal palette. Things can be quite central and and and, and lines can be can be quite square. Mm. And geometry can, can be quite square because it lends itself to that sort of tonal, uh, that sort of tonal palette, that sort of tranquility or calmness that I'm mm. I'm trying to trying to capture. Mm. Oh, it's, God, it's really interesting listening to you. Do you have a, um, any sort of feelings about, um, we talked briefly about exhibiting, but do you think that's something that you, you might consider doing? I mean, you, you've been published, you've, you've rocketed to stardom, as they say, with this wonderful picture. I mean, there's no question that the, the photographic community are, are, well, it's an immense, the Landscape Photographer of the Year has, I, I'm not just saying this because it was something I thought of all those years ago, and with a lot of support from different people. Mm. Um, and I was really, I'm grateful to them all who've, who've, who've helped. And, and who, the people who have got behind it um, in many ways, have uh, they've been elevated themselves. So everybody connected with it. Uh, I mean, would you, would you think it's fair to say, not wishing, wishing to put words in your mouth, that it po possibly is um, the number one landscape photography competition but not only this country but maybe in the world because I've never seen anything else and and people who get behind it and involve themselves in it I, I think seem to really um, get an enormous back, amount back from it the, the, the people who enter and the people who support it. I, I'm going to to sort of suggest that you know certainly for myself and my own experience if, if it isn't the best it's certainly it's certainly right up there at the, at the very top based on my my experience the opportunities for it are, are you know, have, have the, you know, have a, a potentially life changing. So, um, certainly from a photographic perspective. So, Brilliant. it's done me the 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 world of good. Um, and I mean, I, I've been fortunate that I've had a couple of shortlisted images over, since as, as as well. And and for the same, you know, for the same reasons, really, it's mm. you know, there there is that sort of sense of, of sort of confidence that comes with any sort of form of success from you know even just from being shortlisted all the way up up, up to winning. So and it has a lot of weight and, and sort of credibility. Mm. Um, it's something that I'm very very grateful to have been you know to have been a, a, a part of and have to benefited from so 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 grandly really. Mm. I'm so pleased. But there's another question I wanted to uh, ask you, which was some. Um, the, the business of being in a in a book, I think, is a is a lovely feeling, isn't it, to be to be published? And you did you did touch on it when we first started talking about it, and that that feeling uh, is really really hard to describe. That you know thousands of copies of the book uh, go out, and lots of people you know then talk about it. But the thing that I'm interested to ask you, um, ask, I get your answer, is that the still image, um, the still photograph. Never mind Instagram and, and and Facebook and everything, which I you know do keep them pretty amazing. But at, at the same time, they're you know they're, they're 350 million every 24 hours apparently, which I keep mentioning. But also photographic clubs contribute hugely to keeping 
photography alive. They really do. They're all volunteers. And I, I think the phot photographic societies and clubs are marvellous. But do you think the still image is now earning much more respect, the still photographic image, much more respect than it, than it used to have? It was, you know, well, it's just a photograph. Um, you have 36 goes, you're bound to get something, trial and error. But I think looking at your photograph and the other winners in the books, and not just the winners, but all the contributors and their wonderful photographs in, the, in all 13 books that we've got and soon the, soon the 14th. Um, I, I think in a way, I hope the competition has contributed to this, to a greater respect for the still image. I, I would like to, I would like to, to agree. Um, it's, I always think about sort of photography. It's a very sort of difficult sort of uh, sub, subject really to sort of think about sort of photography and, 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 and its sort of power and, and, and importance. And it's, it has, uh, you know, a, a well-executed well -executed photograph that, you know, captures or, or records, uh, you know, a, a particular moment in, in time. And if, if it's the right, that right sort of moment, it, it, it can have so much sort of, um, it can have so much power. And in a digital age, making yourself sort of stand out is, is quite difficult. The opportunity for publishing and, and sort of presenting your work in so obviously the, the, the competition and, and, and the books that go with it or potentially exhibitions and, and those sorts of things. I did an exhibition a, a few years ago with Parhelion, which is just a, a, a group of photographers local to, to the southeast. And their, their, their feedback was 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 so positive um you know about about the work that was was on was on display um that you can't you can't help but think that, that the photograph even in this sort of digital age um as you, as you say where where you know an image can be put up online and then lost almost instantly you know in in it, it still has it has still has the ability to sort of move people or evoke an emotional an emotional response yes um, and I think that I think that that's really good, and that's one of certainly one of the things that, that sort of keeps me going. One of the other things that I think is worth uh, discussing, Matthew, is that apart from just the printing um, and seeing, you know, our images in the books and so on, and the emotional tug, it's quite interesting to look at the way the huge number of people all over the world engage in what I call the people's new common language, which is photography, 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 350 odd million, <laughs> photo, you know, putting images up per, every 24 hours onto Facebook, 80 odd million to Instagram, I'm told. But ultimately though, the, the really well-crafted um, um, uh, images that have a huge, what I call emotional um, tug to them, they do surface. And, and when you look at some of the images over the years, the, the winners in Landscape Photographer of the Year and, and other photographs that we see you know, in different parts of the world. And I'm looking back at the great Don McCullen's images of the Vietnam War. You know, they're images that we all remember and everyone will remember yours. And, and I think most people will remember the winners from previous years. Um, and, but it's fascinating to see that, that the people are beginning to acquire and, and buy Photographs, as you were saying, that you were you were fortunate enough to uh, to have sold some of your wonderful image of the marmoration. But I and I'm not surprised. I would I would, you know, I would suggest that 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 is a photograph that on a wall is absolutely fascinating, and people really do enjoy. So um, I'm wondering what you think about that. Do you think do you think people really are beginning to buy more photographs than they used to? I certainly know of a, of a few individuals who I would almost call um, sort of collectors, and I mean, I would love to love to be able to do to do the same. I, I like to buy photographic books um, at this at this point in time. That's my sort of um, you know, sort of my my contribution really to their their ongoing endeavour and sort of trying to to keep it going. Mm. And there's a there's a real pleasure from both from creating the. the the photograph at the point of capturing it, but then also distilling it down and and and, and producing the the print, and for then someone to to want to sort of purchase that that print and have it have it on their wall is obviously incredibly satisfying. And you can only assume that that it's obviously talking to them. It's not just a you know a, a sort of a, a pretty picture, but it, it sort of 
it means something more to them, uh, you know, uh, at, a, at a particular level. I recall someone, uh, w w one of the people who bought the, the photograph explained how sh she and her husband had gotten engaged on, on, on the pier. Oh. So there was oh. that real sort of, uh, sort of um, personal connection to, to, oh, the, to the photograph as, as, as well. I mean, it is, it, is, it is lovely that people are prepared to, you know, pay whatever amount of money it is to, you know, to acquire photographs. But have you thought of doing um, a, a book of your own work? Have you got a built up a collection yet of images that you'd quite like to share or make into art posters, whatever we want to call them, or I, I, I would love to. Um, if it's on one of those things that's on the back burner until um, until I feel comfortable that I've got um, that right coherence body body of work. Mm. Um, uh, you know, it's 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 certainly something that I would would like to do. There's a certainly a growing interest in creating almost um, sort of print boxes where you, you know, so a, a, a client would buy half a dozen half a dozen prints in in a sort of nice bound bound box, so that it's sort of that sort of halfway between you know full on large wall print, but a, and, a, and a coffee table coffee table book. It sort of sits in, in this little sort of niche in, in the middle, which I think is, is potentially quite, quite interesting as, as, as well. Um, mm. So, I, you know, I, th I, th I think certainly there'll be something in, in, in the future. Um, I'm just waiting for the, the, the right opportunity <laughs> to you, or, the, or the right set of images. Yes. I know the trigger that says, come on. Yeah, come yes, on, exactly. It, 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 you know, because a lot of, um, I often think we need what I call a self-imposed brief so that to drive our photography forward, we, we need to be able to, you know, say, you know, for example, you could, you could go and approach, um, I don't know, maybe one of the local hotels in Brighton and say, look, would, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very familiar with this area. Would you like to commission me to do a book that you could then, um, you know, perhaps give to your guests or something as a, as a thank you for staying there. So there are, there are opportunities, I think, in photography. Um, and, you know, you, the fact that you've won the 2016 Landscape Photographer of the Year overall winner, that, that's not a bad passport to, to get people to sort of sit up and, and say, oh, we might talk to this guy. So, um, I, no, I think that there's, a, there's a many, many ways of extending one's photography. It's, it's really, I think it's really worth making sure that it doesn't drop off to sleep a bit. And I'm sure you're not doing that. But I, I do meet a lot of people who say, I, you know, I've done no photography really in the last year. And, uh, and then, which is rather sad. However, we know that in the last year, it actually hasn't, hasn't really been possible. Do you ever, out of interest, go through some of your photography from many years ago, Matthew, and you think, I must have a little look and see, maybe I've overlooked something and, and see what I've got in my, in my archive. I, I did, I went through an exercise doing that last year. Um, look, revisiting some of some of my older photographs, having a little tweak and play with them, to see why did I process it in, in that way. But also, it was a nice exercise, you know, to see how I kind of how I had evolved over time. Um, not not necessarily bettered, although I'd like to think that that I had on 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 the whole. The photographs that you you took five or ten years ago still have still have merit. Um, quite an illuminating experience. If you were to meet um, somebody who's thinking of entering the competition, what would you what would you say to them, bearing in mind how it was for you um, in in when in two thousand and sixteen? Uh, and apart over and above from the confidence, what what a sort of advice would you give to a person that's you know maybe a younger person who'd never entered a competition before? Try to my sort of the, the, the key advice is 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 make trying to make sure that you you sort of stand out. I think, and as a result of of, of that, it's almost a case of sort of taking taking a risk. So whenever I've entered, I always enter. You might enter some sort of more traditional landscape works, perhaps things that are a little bit more safe. But equally, it's good to have, I don't know half a dozen wild cards to throw in there as, as, as well. Something that is completely different or, or is almost so devoid of landscape that it almost isn't a landscape picture. Mm. Because it's certainly my experience, those, it's the photographs that, that kind of, 
that are a little bit different that, that are going to catch the judge's eye of the ones that, that are going to, to to do well. I mean, obviously there's my sort of Starling Vortex, the, the Starling photograph as well, and then the following year, it was Puffins on, on Scoma. Mm. And that made the, the front cover of the Sunday Times magazine. It did. It did. It was um, superb. So again, you know, another photograph that is not what you might call a, you know, a, a, a landscape photograph. I'm sure the photo, some parts of the photographic community were up in arms because it was wildlife. Um, but why not? You yeah. know, in the, in the same way that the starlings in Brighton are integral to the waterfront uh, during, during the winter months, puffins on, on Skema are, are equally as integral, integral to, our, to our coastlines during the summer. Yeah, very so, much so. And you're absolutely right. It was a landscape with... Uh, with an element, a wonderful element of of, uh, of of bird life right there. It was a superb image, I remember. I, I hope you've got lots of copies of the Sunday Times magazine. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few knocking about somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I bet there are. It's signed and everything else. But where, where, when it comes to um, going back to the uh, exhibition idea and the self-imposed brief thing, do you find that um, sometimes photography, you don't, you really don't, it doesn't have... There isn't time in your in your busy life to fit it in, and yet when you have engaged with it, you're always so glad that you have because you come back enriched. And even if you don't have the image you sought, you still feel elevated because you've you've enjoyed the pursuit, the business of making images, which is really really rewarding, isn't it? it it's not it's not oh I've, if I don't you know you're never angry if you don't manage to produce mm -hmm. a photograph. That anger doesn't come into it, but you've had a wonderful experience in in what I call having a go? Photography is, I always think of photography being a sort of almost secondary, it is secondary to, to the experience, you know, going out, getting up early, switching the alarm off at four o'clock and, and sort of trekking out into a misty field or, or into a, down to the coast or any sort of any sort of location. It's, it's, it's an experience that so few comparatively few people get get to get to see or get to witness mm. and if I come away with with a photograph at, at the end of that that sort of process then then all to you know all, all the better but the uplifting element uh you know of that experience is is just being stood in 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 that location and sort of just absorbing the sights and, and the smells and, and and the sounds and what is happening around you Mm. And I think emotively, you know, a lot of the sort of skill in, in photography is, is trying to distill how you feel those sort of, those sort of extra sensory sort of, um, those sort of feelings, that smell, the sound into, into a photograph. It's, it's those ones that, that do it well, that are, those are the, the ones that are, are, are memorable. Yes. It, it, I think the, um, that the most important thing to convey to people, because I, I'm often finding that, you know, you meet people who say, you have to, why do you have to photograph everything? You know, why can't you just enjoy it and really get into it and just look at it and, and enjoy it? And, and I'm sure you would join me and say, no, but it's through photographing it that I do enjoy it more than you do, probably, because I, I'm getting right into it, into the very heart of it. You hear a lot of why you know you're, you're looking through through the camera rather than looking at it in in real life. And then my sort of counter is that well, they'll come over and they'll stand and they'll tell me that, and then they'll walk off. I yeah. might have been stood in that spot two hours. Yeah, you know, just taking it all in, um, yeah. Yeah. You know, enjoying enjoying all those different layers that are that are that are within within a landscape. Yes, it often is. I often say you notice more, you see more, and you absorb more. And talk about you know full immersion. You know, right in there, and it and it is. Mar I mean, look what look what we you have given us. Um, looking at this again, the image. Um, you know, we we have been hugely bent. We have benefited no end by seeing this photograph. And as I said earlier, you know, we can hear the sound and everything. And and what I love is is the fact that I'm sure that you you meet people often who just say, oh, you won Landscape Photographer of the Year. Oh, yeah, you had that marvellous image of those incredible starlings in front of um, Brighton Pier. So it, there's no question about it, that you, you know, you, 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 you've elevated yourself and you've elevated the people who've enjoyed looking at it and they will, they will never forget it. Do you, do you sometimes feel that, 
it would be a, a lovely thing to try and encourage younger people. Um, I'm not saying, you know, five-year-old children, although why not? Why I've, not? Got grand, I've got granddaughters who um, are already beginning to photograph, but there are younger people who show aptitude um, for photography. And um, it would be rather nice to be introducing it more to, to, to schools. I don't, I don't painting as we know in painting classes, but I, I've got a feeling that in, in some schools, photography doesn't really feature. And it would be a lovely thing if some of our, our um, camera manufacturing companies could, you know, to give some schools um, fairly basic, straightforward cameras, digital. Uh, so there's no subsequent cost like there was with film and encourage them perhaps to see the, the, the world of nature and, 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 and our world in a, in a rather more, more intense way. Be rather nice that I don't know. Do your children show? How old are your little ones? Oh, um, the, the youngest is is just about to be one. The oldest is uh, he's, he's four in four in the summer, right. and we are planning on getting him his first first camera. For his oh, marvelous! A, Hassel, a Hasselblad, of course, or a... oh, yeah, of course, yeah, Nikon. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but it will be. They are aware of obviously what you do, and it just would be. It would be. I think it would be a lovely thing. Do you think that's an? I mean, you, there's no reason at a local school you don't obviously have the time where you could perhaps go and do a little talk and a slideshow of, of some of your photography. I, I think it would go down really well in the art department, it's, just a half hour talk. It's interesting because I used to be a scout leader um, and I oh. had to step away to, well, I stepped away for many reasons, partly I relocated and we had a family, so we put it on hold. But anyway, I used to do the Duke of Edinburgh, used to take children um, a, a, around and, and do the Duke of Edinburgh. And it was surprising how um, you, you take these, these, these children to these sort of natural environments. And a lot of them didn't know that we'd even got them. Mm. And there's this sort of, I, I suppose, um, I'd like to hope that there's a, there's, a, there's a generation of children who are certainly more interested in, in sort of wildlife and nature and, and the landscape, um, you know, sort of, environmental issues and, and 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 all of that sort of uh, sort of encompassed together mm. that there's certainly going to be an interest in in in, in photography and, and 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 the power and the role that photography could, could kind of could play but also just being out and, and experiencing these sort of environment and developing a, a love and, and a passion for them as as well yeah. I, I think it would be a fantastic opportunity for, for, for children, certainly those who are perhaps based in more inner city, inner city schools that, that don't have ready, ac readily ac uh, ready access to, to sort of countryside and the outside and, and, and the natural world. Mm. So it, it, could be, it could be really quite powerful. Yes, I think it would be. I might, I might, maybe I might talk to some of the camera manufacturers to, to trial it. I think it would be a lovely thing. Uh, and also the other thing is, of course, the height of, of the little ones is different and they and they they perceive things and see things in a different way don't they hmm. whereas we stand at the height we stand at and so on but it I think it would be a very very exciting thing if we could do that might it would be rather fun to have an exhibition of photographs by children you know of, of a I mean you dealt with water here and it would be rather fun to see what their interpretation is um perhaps perhaps yeah that's a that's a rather interesting point Maybe my first yeah. exhibition will actually be my son's then. Yes, that would yes, that would be fun. That would be fun. Do you ever do um, talks on on photography? Yes, I do. Um, I have. A, I've been done quite a few Zoom ones. Uh, unsurprisingly, this past twelve months, I show photographs and describe the story behind you know the series of images as opposed to the, the more technical. Um, the technical side of things but it, it's more about why I took the picture what caught my eye what what was of interest um, and and how a series of photographs fit, fit together um, mm. as, as opposed to individual individual images mm. that, that's a, it's a lovely thing that because a, a lot of people who um, love photography but perhaps have never, not really got into doing it you know what, what's the word properly um, and, and with great care and, and not just recording something. Um, I think there's a huge interest in photography. There really, really is. I mean, I, we've got Light and Land has got quite a few leaders now who, um, who do talks and, and they're re I think a lot of the audience really find it absolutely fascinating. And, ge and generally speaking, 
as we said a little bit earlier, that you know they're more photographic books, and and individual photographers are then self-publishing, and getting an enormous amount of pleasure from it. Um, and I do think that the, the people who involve themselves in in photography and use it as a as a means of promoting themselves and getting out there into the photographic community, I think the rewards are absolutely absolutely immense. Because I can't paint, um, I can't sketch. Um, I'm not too bad at carpentry, but most of that I used to I use a lot of what we call plastic wood to make up for the mistakes, the dovetail joint that I get wrong. <laughs> but generally speaking. Um, the one thing that I find I really do enjoy consistently over probably over 45 years now, I suppose, um, is my photography. And I'm always trying to, I'm always struggling with trying to improve on it. And I'm, and I still, I'm perfectly happy to admit that my confidence um, is not sort of brimming over, not for one moment. I'm still questioning what I've done. I'm still getting the sense of reward um, from it. And and the, the you know the that I'm getting closer to nature and things, so it's it is a wonderful evolving creative endeavor, isn't it? It's uh, it's I, I think of photography being um, a lifetime journey, mm. as opposed to me going out and taking photographs. Um, I the way that I work is is very much project based. Um, I don't again I don't like to think of photographs as individuals. I like to work collectively um, and, and, and create little mini, mini series so there's a consistency uh, you know, a, a across the way that, that I work. I started photography as a black and white and who knows what, it, where, what I'm going to be doing in the future. Who knows, I might even be a portrait photographer in, in, in the future. Yes. I doubt yeah. it. <laughs> uh, have you found that your, your, your style modifies a little bit? I mean, I know we talked about lots of variety and you know, like like me, we just see this and you think, oh my gosh, that's good. I respond to that, a bit of color, a flash of something here or there. I mean, the, the your image of the start of the murmuration that I suspect a lot of people wouldn't wouldn't perhaps um, wouldn't really know quite how to produce an image in the way that you did. They they might not have thought of the you know the shutter speed and where you've done it you know so brilliantly. And I I think it was such a surprise for people to to see this and. And not they they would have known oh he used a certain shutter speed to make it so effective but it was such a, a, a very very well crafted image and so skillfully executed with exactly the right shutter speed I mean if heaven say a little bit longer and we, it would have just been a mist wouldn't it so you you absolutely nailed it but I and but the the process of um, learning is lovely isn't it and and the variety and I know some the variety of one's tastes. And I never wanted to be accused of being formulaic, you know, just same as, same as. Um, and I know that, okay, centipede's a bit of a departure, but the other day, I, you know, I photographed some, some tulips on a, on a windowsill. And, and it's just such a wonderful way, I know we're repeating ourselves in a bit, but of observing our world mm -hmm. and noticing our world so profoundly. So um, I'm, I must say, I'm really, I'm really saluting you and, Thank you for joining us. It's been absolutely terrific. Really, really good. So I'm, I'm going to say farewell. And, um, and I hope you've enjoyed our nattering. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and do, do stay in touch with us all. And, um, and thank you for supporting Landscape Photography of the Year, Matthew. It's really, really good of you. And a, a worthy winner, 2016, a few years ago now. But still, your image is vivid in everybody's minds. Thank you so much. Thank you. You've been listening to Take A View Podcast with Charlie Waite.